So that fellow couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fellow didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? Didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? Amen. You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest by kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that. All right. In this video, I want to talk about good works versus bad works. And try to explain things to you in a way that is very simple. So that you can understand God. You can understand judgment. You can understand the gospel. Now, we as people, we look at each other as evil people and good people, depending on if we do good or do bad. Right? But it's not quite like that. It's actually not like that at all. And I would like to explain. For starters, I'm going to say this line going through both these people represents their sinful nature. Let's do this little S here going through both the sinful nature where you both desire, right? Let's put the sinful desire is to do this. The bad things, right? And the bad works would be selfish. And that's what we're just going to sum it up with, selfish. Over here, the good, the good works, those are selfless works, right? And we think we can judge people based on whether or not they're doing this or if they're doing this. Right? I don't know if you can see my cursor. It does look very faint, but we judge them based on whether they're doing something that looks selfless or we judge them by looking at something that seems to be selfish. Right? But it's not like that. And that's why I have this person labeled evil and this person labeled good. Now, the person over here that is good, the reason why they are good is because this person is born again and they truly the desire to do the good right they desire this they have something in them that is a different desire from the selfish sinful desire that comes from the flesh they have something within them now the spirit of god that changes them from the inside out where they truly desire to do good works but they still battle with the flesh and they don't always do what they want to do. And sometimes they do the things they don't want to do on the other side. Like Paul tells us in Romans chapter 7, at the end of that chapter. This does not make us bad. It shows the sinful nature that Jesus died for and put the death on the cross. And we need to walk with God to overcome it. Right? But since... If you look at this person and you catch them doing something selfish, you think, oh, they're an evil person, but they're not. Right? You think they're condemned, but they're not. On vice versa, you have this evil person who desires bad. And he doesn't accept God. He doesn't accept Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe the gospel. He's not born again. He knows he desires to do bad things, but he wants people to think he's good. Or she wants people to think that she is good. 
right? And so they will do the selfless things or things that appear to be selfless, but the person is doing it out of a selfish desire here. So this person is going to do things over here. They're going to do good works like uh, charity, right? That's pretty selfless, right? You're given of your time, your energy, your money to help out those in need, right? So you think this evil person is good because you're looking at their works. Like, hey, look at their, look at the charity they're doing. But why are they doing the charity? That you cannot see. You don't know the heart. Ultimately, this person is actually not really doing a good work. They are doing a selfish work because they're, they want to put off an appearance of being good. They don't actually want to be good. They want to just appear to be good. So they do something like a charitable work. So now you think that this selfish person is a selfless person, right? You may even think that they're a Christian. They may even claim to be Christian. And they may even be a pastor, a priest, a bishop, a cardinal, the Roman Pope even, right? And they are doing this over here, but they're really on the other side. Do you see how you can't judge by appearance? Right? Because you can't judge the heart. God can. That's why your good works will not justify you before God. Even if you're on the good side, your good works don't justify you. Right? Because you can do good works as the evil person to appear to be good. You can be someone kind of in the middle. We'll just put a weird circle here to represent somebody who's a mix, right? They're not, they haven't just given over to the other side, but they're also not rejecting God and Jesus yet. They're in the middle and they can do things that are good still out of a selfish way, which most Christians do, which is still selfish. And that is to save themselves, right? They want their good to outweigh their bad. They're trying to save themselves from hell. They're trying to earn heaven. So they do the charity, right? The selfless things. But they did it all for themselves. So it's not actually doing what God wanted. And even the good person can be doing the same thing here, but they're doing it again for the selfish reason of earning rewards, right? They want to go to heaven and they know that they're saved no matter what, but they're doing the good work so that they can earn rewards rewards right so they're also doing the charity they're doing these things to look good in the eyes of man they're doing the things that look good in their own eyes so that they can think that hey i'm over here in the good when they're really over here in the bad according to man we would know it's good works but in reality when you judge it by the heart and righteous judgment you see that what they're doing is completely selfish. But we also have the flip side of things. The flip side of things is that, let's say the evil person is uh, the Nazis, right? We'll see the person in the middle here are the Jews. And then the good person here is just, we'll say a Christian, but they could be even an atheist. It could be anybody right, on the spectrum now. It could even be a Muslim, a Buddhist, right? We'll put Christian atheists and everything in between there. And th this person wants to be good, right? So the Nazis come and knock on the good person's door looking for Jews. You're hiding them in the attic, in the cellar, in the walls, under the floors, in the shed, in a bunker, right? You're protecting Jews from the Nazis. You're helping them, right? So what do you do? You do something bad. You lie, right? You do something bad, but it actually is something good. You say, I don't know anything about no Jews, and if I saw some Jews, I would step on them myself. Good riddance to them, right? You, you pretend like you hate them just as much as the Nazis hate them, right? 
So they're like, okay, they think you are one of them, and they leave. Well, you just sinned, right? You broke the letter of the law. You're a sinner. You did the wrong thing. You lied. Right? Well, you broke the letter of the law, but you kept the spirit of the law. What's the spirit of the law? Loving God with all you got, loving your fellow man as yourself. By you lying and you taking sin upon yourself, like Jesus did, he took upon our sin. You protected the Jews from harm and from death. Right? So you did the right thing by the Jews. You protected the Nazis from bringing a sin upon themselves from harming or killing the Jews. So you protected two people and two groups of people from sin by you sinning yourself. Just like Jesus protected us from sin by taking on our sin and becoming our sin and taking on our punishment for us. Right? So even though you appear to have done something over here, you actually, in reality, did something over here. So you see how your works, you can't quite judge the person by their works. You can encourage people to do good works, and they should do good works. That's what I'm going to do. Do this side. Let's change the color here so you can see this. Do this right here. Do good, all the good works. Even if you're doing it selfishly, it's better that these things are done anyway. And uh, let's do red here. Don't do the bad things. Don't do the sinful, selfish things, the pleasure-seeking things that you know are at the expense of other people. Don't do this, right? So let's take a, a green. We'll do a yes for this. And... Uh, I don't know what color to use over here now. Um, let's use gray. Don't do this. I'll make that clear. Right? But at the same time, just because someone did something bad doesn't mean that they're condemned and they're not saved. And just because someone does something good doesn't mean they're a Christian and that they're saved. Right? You cannot judge by the works. You gotta have discernment, because if you just judge by the outward appearance, you can easily be fooled, right? Because there's people who look at me and they say they're gonna stop listening to my videos. Because in some of my videos, I'll say the word shit instead of crap, or I'll say the word ass instead of butt, and very rarely I'll say the word bitch. And because I say those words, you might be one of them now who are just disgusted and now you're not going to listen to what I'm saying, even though what I'm saying is the truth. You're going to ignore me because you think what I just did is some evil, bad work. And even if it is, that doesn't change the truth of what I'm presenting. Right? But then somebody will come to you and they will say the nicest words. They'll never use words like that. And they'll talk real soft and very smooth and encourage you all the time and they're super nice and you know they never say anything bad in any way whatsoever they're like soft little baby angels and the way that they talk and but the whole time they're being fake to make you think that there's something that they are not they are really let me look at the color here i guess they're really this. And they're putting off an appearance as if they're this. And you believe it because of this. Right? They're evil, pretending to be good, so they do some good things that you think are good. And it's, that's how easy it is to fool somebody, right? You go do some charitable work. You see this all the time when it comes to politicians or some CEO or somebody up in a uh, in some kind of business and they got some trouble with the law or trying to get some votes, you know, whatever the issue may be. They'll do some of these good things and they were like, oh, look at them. They're a good person. No, they are, they're over here on the bad side. You know, the real reality, they're over here just trying to make you think they're good and trying to get a vote, trying to get your sympathy. Trying to get your support. It's all selfish. It's all about them.
but they're trying to make you think that it's not and they deceive you that easily because you judge them by the works you may be saying well jesus says you know them by their fruit the fruit is not good works believe it or not good works are not the fruit what is what is the fruit galatians chapter 5 tells us the fruit and the fruit is of the spirit the fruit of the spirit comes by faith right you only get the spiritual fruit by faith by believing trusting god and the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace those are not good works right because you can love somebody by telling them something very harsh you're going to hell because you have sins that you cannot pay for you have a sinful nature you cannot change you doing all these good works does not cover up your sins it doesn't change who and what you are there's no amount that's going to change that the works cannot save you it's just a cover up to cover up what you really are trying to sweep what you are under the rug and trying to put on makeup that's all this is doing you're on your way to hell you need to come to god and trust in him and that he's for you and not against you in spite of you being evil and he wants to make you good from the inside out he doesn't want to put on this outward appearance he wants to change you from the inside out where you truly do things selflessly for others not focused on yourself willing to sacrifice yourself for others right and you may not see what i just said there is a good work but it is right it's doing the fruit of the spirit giving love saying hey i don't want you to go to hell and i'm trying to reason with you here to let you know you're on your way to hell i don't want you to go there you don't want to go there look in the mirror and face the truth look at yourself why do you really do what you do and don't do what you don't do right you try not to do the bad thing even though you really want to you try to do the good thing even though you don't really want to why self-preservation right you don't want to be punished you want reward you don't want to go to hell you want to go to heaven you're focused on yourself and because of your disposition there your selfishness even if you don't do any bad for the rest of your life and you do all good for the rest of your life you're still evil on the inside you haven't cleaned the inside out you haven't been born again you're still damned and when you accept this that's where you can truly act in love because it's not about you anymore i don't have to worry about hell i don't have to worry about heaven I know I'm not going to hell. I know I'm going to heaven. So all the things I do, you can see that there's a love for God and love for fellow man because all I get is tomatoes and rocks thrown at me for this kind of thing. Right? So where, where's my motive? What benefit do I get in this life from it? I just got faith that I'm walking with God. I don't see any benefit from it that I get from anybody else in this world. Just got a clear conscience with God, which the fruit of the Spirit there. What is it? Peace. You have peace with God, even though the world's against you and thinks you're bad. They call good evil and evil good because they don't know any better. Your eyes are closed and your ears are deaf. And a lot of times I feel like I'm singing songs to the deaf and painting pictures to the blind. But you got to do what you got to do, right? You got to have hope. How to reach somebody, right? And uh, yeah, just doing another video connecting to one I made earlier about uh, uh, the flesh and the spirit warring against one another. This ties into the war. This is part of that whole battle. You know, what's the first thing that is sacrificed in war? It's the truth. So we need to expose the truth of what's really going on.
because there's nothing we can think, say, or do that can save us. Nothing. You see, all this a lot of times just quenches your conscience. You, you've done bad things. You, you remember the bad things. You want to clear the conscience. So you do good things to clear your conscience. Again, you're doing it for a selfish reason. So this good work is not a good work. Because you did it for you. You didn't really do it for someone else. You did it so that you feel like you're a good person when you know you're not. You're just, again, quenching your conscience and burying your true self under makeup to appear as though you're something you're not. And if you're honest with yourself, you, you would admit this. And this is when you realize what God has done for you. And you cry out for him for mercy and grace because you know you deserve hell and you don't deserve heaven. And you eat the humble pie and you accept it. And only then can you understand the gospel and what Jesus Christ has done for you. How he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes on to the Father but by him. He is the door. And if you try to come into heaven some other way, you are a thief and a robber. Then you can see that what Jesus did when he lived that perfect life was to give it to you. So that when you give your life to him at the cross... Your past, present, and future is dumb. God considers you judged, condemned, and put to death already through Jesus Christ by faith. And he gives you the free ticket. He gives you his life. His righteous life that he lived under the law. So his righteousness now covers you and you have his eternal life. You cannot be condemned now because you've already been condemned. Even the rest of your life that you haven't lived out yet, all the stuff that you may do in the future or are doing right now that's selfish and evil, Jesus has paid for it. That's your only way to heaven. That's your only way. You must die and be born again because we are all this by nature. We're naturally selfish and self-absorbed and even self-righteous, right? When we actually start thinking, we're look at all the good things we do over here. Look at, uh, I do all this. You start thinking you are self-righteous now. You wouldn't call yourself self-righteous. You just think I'm righteous. I deserve heaven. I don't deserve hell. You only did it for yourself, so you don't deserve heaven. The people in heaven don't do things for themselves, as in they don't do what they do to escape hell and to earn heaven. They do things for God and their fellow man. You do this while really being completely bad and selfish. And that's why you need to die at the cross so that you become down here. Let's change the color so that we show a change. You get with the Spirit of God and then all of a sudden you change. And even though sometimes you do this, it's under the blood. You should still try not to do that. Sometimes you do that. Like I said, you lie to protect the Jews. You did something which ultimately is good. You're willing to be condemned in the eyes of God by lying and breaking the letter of the law to save others. You show this, that you keep the spirit of the law. You truly are willing to sacrifice yourself for others. You're doing this. Because I talked to a seven-day Adventist before, and I used this analogy about the Nazis and the Jews and protecting them, and lying to protect them, and he said that you shouldn't lie to him. So you see how self-righteous and evil he is, that he's not willing to sacrifice himself and lie to protect the Jews over here. He's like, no, because then I will be condemned. I would be a liar. I would go to hell. So I'm not going to lie. Well, right there, he broke the spirit of the law, and he condemned himself. Right? Even though he didn't lie, he kept the letter of the law. He let the Nazis take the Jews and do what they did to him. He is selfish and self-righteous because he did a selfish thing thinking he was doing the right thing. But then he still thinks he's righteous. Like, oh, God judges me. You're like, well, I kept the letter of the law. I did not lie. 
And that's how the self-righteous evil person looks at it. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, did you truly love your fellow man? If you did, you would have sacrificed yourself for them. Even sacrificed yourself to me as a sinner to save them, like Jesus did. What shows a lot of people they don't know the gospel, they don't know Jesus. But, uh, yeah, with all that being said, I hope I got the point across. I tried to say it in different ways. Hopefully, it got through. God willing. So thanks for watching and take care. All right. I just wanted to make a quick video here to put at the end of all my videos, encouraging you to prayfully get into the scriptures. As we read here in Hebrews chapter 12, at verse 2, it says, Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And this is very interesting that it refers to Jesus as the author of our faith. An author is somebody who writes. And in Romans chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, it says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you see here how Jesus is the author and finisher of our finisher of our of our faith and how you get faith from hearing the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. The Bible, the scriptures are the written Word of God. It is God in our world. It's God's representative in our world and that would be the King James Bible. And if you're saying it doesn't say read, it says hear. Well, then read it out loud, my friends. I know some of you are wise asses, and that's what you're going to say. Well, then read it out loud. And you build your faith. And you notice how obeying the gospel here is about believing it. That's how you obey it. The gospel is the good news of our salvation. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. But coming back to the word of God here. We are told in Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. This is very fitting because Isaiah has 66 chapters, just like there's 66 books in the Bible. And if you do a study on this, you can see that each chapter of Isaiah lines up with each book of the Bible. The first chapter for Genesis, the last chapter for Revelation, have fun doing that. And why should you seek out the book in the, of the Lord and read? So that Jesus never tells you this. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God, as we read here in Matthew 22, 29, when he's talking to the Sadducees who are coming to him with a very silly question that anybody could answer if they actually knew the scriptures. But you see, the Sadducees, they didn't use the whole Old Testament. They just used Moses. So they didn't get the light from the Old Testament to help you understand the Torah. Just like the New Testament shines light and helps you understand the Old Testament. None of it adds or removes from what Moses wrote. It helps you understand what Moses wrote. That's why Isaiah tells us here in Isaiah 8 verse 20, to the law, which is the instructions, the Torah, what God told Moses to write, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of your Bible there. It says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So you see, you test the people to see if they actually have light in them. There's people who have an outward show of light, as Satan himself can come as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. But how do you test the spirits to see if there's truly light in them? They have to line up according to the scriptures. Jesus was not afraid to be tested in the scriptures. He would say, have you not read? Uh, it is written. To search the scriptures. Bring them up. They testify of me. Right? He wasn't worried about that. Paul wasn't either. Acts 17, 11. He wasn't worried about being tested in the scriptures. He didn't make some nonsense about you can't understand the scriptures. You need me to interpret them. No, he, he actually called the Barians noble. 
for hearing what he had to say and then searching the scriptures to see if it was so. Because that's what we're supposed to do. If you don't line up with the scriptures, you're not of God. Very simple, very easy. God made it very easy for us to know him and to know who is not of him. He gave us his word and it's super simple. If it doesn't line up with him, then obviously it's somebody else trying to say that they're from him. A stranger trying to kidnap you, right? And what does Jesus tell us about the word in John 17, 17? He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you Christians that want to be sanctified and you're trying to sanctify yourself by repenting of all your sins so that you become sinless. You want that sanctification. You need to get into the word because when you have the word abiding in you, God changes you from the inside out where you're not making the change where you sanctify yourself by becoming some sinless being. By focusing on your sins and fighting against them. No, that's just cleaning the outside of the cup and containing your sinful nature. You need to come to Jesus to be born again, sealed with his Holy Spirit, and become one with his Spirit. And as Jesus says in John 6, 63, his word is spirit and it is truth. Flesh profits nothing. You get into the word. You are partaking of the spirit of God. And God's spirit is life-giving, as we see in Genesis, bringing life to to things that have no life. You want that life. You want to be sanctified. You need to get into the word. As we're told here in Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 25 through 27. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water. By the word. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So how do you receive this cleansing? By getting into the word. It is spirit. The spirit is in reference to water. You want that cleansing? Get into the word. That's where you are going to be sanctified. So that you would be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. No blemish whatsoever. You need to get into the word so that Jesus is abiding in you and you are abiding in him. You see that? So, moving on to this last verse here, John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Because the only way to know the Father is to know the Son. You can't come to the Father without going through Jesus. When you know Jesus, you know the Father, because they are one. Jesus is the Father in the flesh. And eternal life is to know them. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 7 to these people who are doing a lot of great works in his name. They're prophesying in his name. They're casting out devils in his name. They're doing many mighty works in his name. And Jesus says, I never knew you. You see, you're saved not because of your works, not because you repented of your sins, not because you're perfect and you've deserved it and you've earned it somehow, that you've proven yourself. No, you're saved because of your relationship with God. If you've come to the cross and have been born again, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You become one spirit with the Lord. There's no way Jesus can say, I never knew you. Because he knows you. He made you anew at the cross. He knows you intimately. You're saved at that point. You need to have that deep relationship with God. Just as... Adam knew Eve and she conceived. You need to know God on that level where you are born again. You receive the word of God, which is the seed of God, into your heart, which would be your womb. I know as a man, you might not want to think of that, but that's how it is. Eat the humble pie so that you receive the seed of God, that you may be born again. You see, the women help us understand our role to God. Because to God, we are the bride, the bride of Christ. We are as the woman. So you need to eat the humble pie, receive the seed so that you can be born again. But a lot of Christians, they are just like a lot of women today. We don't need a man. So they're never going to be born again. 
right? A lot of Christians, we don't need God. We can do it ourselves. And they take on the name Christian. Christians seem to be the easiest people to fool. Because all you got to do is say you're Christian. And they'll follow after you. You can be preaching lies because they don't test you to the scriptures. Donald Trump is a good example of a lot of Christians just blindly following him because he said he was Christian. Even though what he asked was asked if he comes to Jesus to ask for forgiveness. He says, no, no, I don't really do that. I, I don't really see myself as a bad person and I just try to do better. So he's not a Christian. He's never been born again. He doesn't believe the gospel, the good news of our salvation. He doesn't even believe he needs it. Yet the Christians are holding him up as if he's Christian and as if he's the, the savior of our country. Right? They're making an idol out of him. And he, obviously he's a pompous ass. Right? And the only reason why he looks good is because the left looks so bad. If it wasn't because of the left looking so hideous, you would be able to see clearly that Trump is no better. He just says you what you want to hear. But then somebody like me, who preaches to you the truth, but then I might say a word you don't like. Like I might say shit or ass, and all of a sudden you're offended and you turn off the video right here saying this guy's not a Christian, you never listen to a thing I say, because I said a couple of words that the Bible doesn't say not to say. The Bible doesn't say not to say any words like that. It says not to have corrupt speaking and guile. Corrupt speaking is what you get from politicians like Trump. That lie. And that's what guile is. It's manipulation. Fake feigned words. Flattery. I'm not doing that. I'm not speaking anything corrupt. And just instead of saying crap or butt, sometimes I end up saying shit or ass. And me saying that right now, you probably getting mad. And that's probably because you're an immature Christian, or not even Christian at all. You're just Christian in name only. And that's why you follow fake Christians so easily. So if you're offended by such things, have fun. Go away. You're not breaking my heart. You're, you're not taking anything from me. You're only hurting yourself by rejecting the truth and following after bullshit. So thanks for watching. Now I'm going to splice into something from Rockman that I really enjoy for the end of this. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fella didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? <laughs> didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved, but you're not saved. You're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. Just like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.